boys and girls, it's me, you know, pretty bird, and I got news, Easter's over, yeah, I missed you last night, I kind of, you know, I took a little holiday. You did? You were there. Uh-huh, I know. Yeah, yeah, we, we took some family time, but now it's, I'm back, and everything's just good, and, but there's, not, there's just something not so good. What's not so good? Well, those those people, those those people from Israelites, you know, some people call them Hebrews, that they're stuck. They're like on the road again, don't know where we're going to. You seem terrible. Yeah, well, you don't seem so good either in the shower. <laughs> so, yeah, I gotta, I gotta finish up a little bit more because I'm curious and I left everybody hanging. Okay. Finish up the story a little bit more then. Well, it said that, that at last that the Israelites were on their way from Egypt to Canaan, you know, running away from the Egyptian Pharaoh because he finally said, get out. And they just took him at his word. Yeah, well, he kind of sort of said stuff like that before and he didn't really mean it. Yeah, he, he takes back his word a lot. Anyway... During those, those, those 400 years that they had been there, you know, to Jacob and his family and his 12 sons had spent in Egypt, well, e each of them had had their own family and babies, and there was a long line now of people living in Israel. Living where? Egypt. Yeah. So, anyway, it was a very long line. Cousins and cousins and cousins and great cousins and all of that. Okay. So what happened? Well, instead of just going the shortest road straight to Canaan, the Lord told Moses to lead the people towards the Red Sea and, and the wilderness around it. Why? I don't know. They didn't have a GPS. Well, okay. So, he did this so that they really, well, they they would be not going through this one place called Philistine, Philistine. Philistines? Yeah, where the Philistines lived, because that was bad territory there. So, Moses knew this country pretty good around the Red Sea, because, see, it had been where he had watched Jethro's flocks. Remember when he got his wife? Yeah, uh-huh. And, and, and then he had heard that, that it was it's going to be a very long parade, so, anyway, they were in very good hands. How did they know which direction really to go? We've already determined they don't have GPSs. So, God gave them a pillar of cloud. You know, big tall one that like holds up the front porch? Uh, the last pillar we talked about was a pillar of salt. Oh, no, that was very bad. That was Lot's wife. But, yeah, that same kind of cylinder shape. It was, it was a cloud this time, and they just followed it, kind of like this. Yeah. Uh, 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 what at night? Well, they didn't really travel much at night, but at night it turned into a, a pillar of fire, it, and it didn't go out. Okay. Pretty good, huh? I think you can see that from a ways away. Well, when Pharaoh realized that these Israelite people had really gone, and, and he was, you know, not done with his, his sorrow from all of the dead, the dead baby boys. Mm, the oldest boys. Well... He realized he had done it again. He had let his mouth get him in trouble. And? He had no slaves to build with. No. <laughs> that would be bad news. So, when the news reached him that they had made their way into the wilderness and that they were kind of stuck between these two mountains, well, that's when he thought it was his chance to go back and get them. So he sent out his captains and he sent out all of his chariots for battle. And what about then? Well, the swift horses and all, they, they were charging along behind them. And eventually, the, the Israelite people, they saw them and they were like, Oh no, we're doomed now! We should have just stayed in Egypt. Mm-hmm. But? Well, Moses reminded them that the Lord was the one leading them and that they should, like, just hang on. You know, tie a knot and hang on. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid, he told the people. The Lord is going to fight for you. And I would like to see that battle. Well, keep reading. 
Then, as the night fell and the pillar of cloud that had been guiding the Israelites, it, it between, got between them and the Egypts. The Egypts? Egyptians. Thank you. Yeah, and the Egypt army, they couldn't see where they were going. It's kind of, you know, couldn't see. And then the Israelite people, they, they, they camped, but they didn't really, you know, put take off their shoes because that wouldn't be too smart. And what did the what did the Egyptian people do? Well, they just kind of camped too because, well, they couldn't see where they were going. Okay, so what happened then? Well, a marvelous thing happened. Moses, he held out his rod. You know that tricky stick he's got? His, his staff? Yeah, the tricky stick. I'm going to call it that. Okay. He held it above the waters again, and it didn't turn to blood. This time, a strong wind. Want to hear my wind? <sighs> yeah, my strong, a strong wind blew, and it started to separate the water. You know, like, like a big sidewalk. And what happened then? It was dry ground on the bottom. You could see the bottom of the water, like rocks. Mm-hmm. What then? And, and Moses led the people right across the middle of the Red Sea. Yeah. It was really cool. You should see it in this movie they have. Oh, uh, yeah. I know about that movie. Okay. Yeah. And then the Egyptians saw that the Israelites were marching into the sea, and they quickly jumped on their horses and into their chariots, and they followed them. Bad news. Why is that? They can't swim. Well, they don't need to swim. They're just walking. She needs to read ahead like I do. Okay. But as they entered the path through the sea, the Lord looked down from the pillar of cloud and made it difficult for the Egyptians in their chariots. And the wheels just got stuck. Mired down. Sometimes they just like broke off. And, and then they, they looked at the mighty walls of the water around them and they suddenly realized. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. They said, let's forget about the Israelites. Their God is too powerful and strong for us to fight. And by this time, <laughs> the last of the Israelites had reached the shore on the other side of the Red Sea. And then what happened? Well, it was kind of sad. But they turned around and they watched the Egyptian army. They kind of sort of got swallowed up by the water. Because Moses stretched out his tricky stick again, and it, it, it just, that was it. The power over the water just disappeared. And all the walls on the left and the right, they just came. What was that? It's my best water impression. Okay. And the walls of the water, they just tumbled. They leaned, they quivered, and they collapsed. And, and then, then they well. So we have another moment of silence for the Egyptians? Okay. Okay, that's all they deserve. That only is a second. But anyway, they, they, they got killed. And Moses' people, they were very glad that they had done what he told them to do. Mm -hmm. And they sang the song. You want to know the words? Uh, okay. I'll just say it to you. Okay, please, because we determined you do not sing well. Look who's talking. It says, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has saved me. And that was how it ended for them that day. Uh-huh. I got some more questions about these people. Well, you, you probably just need to let the kids go to bed tonight. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, kitties. I had to end you on such a dreadful note. People getting drowned, but, um, well, well, they weren't my favorite people anyway. Uh-uh. I know. I'm supposed to care about everybody. I know. Okay. Well, anyway, kitty, what to do to, to, to cuddle down and pull them covers up and dream about birdies.